voice cry hallelujah amen hallelujah hallelujah ah yes you may be seated i certainly wanted to acknowledge our precious ark for all of his faithful endeavors his diligent efforts and his faithful assistance to the work whereby there are those that are able to listen and hear and to enjoy the informative website that Yah has granted unto us uh, that we could construct to strengthen the bosom uh, of Yisrael. So he brings us here to the center of Yerushalayim uh, for this great uh, gathering of his Mo'at, Tiruach, uh, the blowing uh, and the shofar. We as Yisrael, we wait with great anticipation for the last Shafa to sound, for there is great anticipation and expectation. But there is an offering that he commands unto us on this most blessed assurance of this eve that we have embarked upon. That we must bring an offering unto Yah. And it has not been altered, and it has not been changed. I want to read from the Torah, and certainly give space to our Zachin, that he may come and fill us with the breath of Yah's Torah of enlightenments, that at the conclusion, we will see that even the gift of offering that we offered unto him, was not sufficient and we shall reach the pinnacle of the offering with great vitality and strength to offer unto our Abba for he is great and there is none like him the only thing we as a nation of people possess is that we hold fast unto his Daba for everything that is temporal that can be measured by the conscience of man, that can be perceived by our own intellectual perception, it shall come down to the dust of the earth. There is only one thing that shall stand, and that is the power of his living Torah. And that is why Yeshua, his it's the testimony of his witness, must be real in us. And when the sound of the shofar or the hearing of his Torah, it brings great gladness to our bosom Yisrael. And we rejoice in the abundance of his riches. I want to begin here briefly and quickly so that our Zachain can come, our elder, our Zachain, our chieftain, that he may guide us to the course of Torah that we may delight in the book of Wehira Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 23. This is a sava. And when there is a sava, it is a directive. It is a command. It is an instruction of Almighty Yahweh. And what Yah speaks, Yisrael, it is an eternal flame. It never dies. The Torah of Yah never dies. The offerings are still expected of us. We must learn how to bring the offering unto Yah. And in order for us to understand the dynamics of that, He caused the power of Torah to come alive in the frail nature of flesh. In His Hamashiach, the Redeemer, of Yisrael, whereby he is the example, the pattern for us to walk in. He speaks here unto Moshe with profound utterance and instructions as he ordained this time, this season, this memoria, this zigron, a special time in his bosom. We must remember these are the Moadim of Yah. He never changed Yisrael. He is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. 
It says here in verse 23, And Yahweh, he, daba, he spoke unto Moshe. And this is the utterance of Yah, as he spoke unto him. He says, I want you to instruct to Daba to speak. He says, speak to the children of Yisrael. He did not command him to speak unto the strangers. But he said unto Moshe, I want you to utter with your voice. Speak unto the being children of Yisrael. And this is what you must say. These are the precise instruction. They are with precision that there will be no doubt in the conscience of the children of Yisraya. He tells him in the seventh month. He did not say the first, the fifth, but in the seventh month he is precise. He says in the first day, and this is the first day of Yah's seventh month, he says, shall you have a Shabbat, a Shabbaton? He says, it shall be a Zigron. It shall be a memorial. It shall be an occasion that shall be remembered in the minds of Yah's people. The thought and the concept of it must be encased in our minds that we will never forget. So he calls it a Zigron. A memorial, a time that we shall not forget. He says, it shall be a teruach. It shall be a blowing of the shofar. We understand that the blowing of the shofar is the alarm. It is to awaken us. It is to cause us to rise up out of our drunkenness, of our sleep. And know that the day yam of Yah is at Yah. It is close. It is at hand. It is near. The coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. And that is why this time of the season, uh, it reminds us uh, that in the time of the ingathering of Yisrael, we shall see the hope, the tzikva, of everything that is written in Torah, and that is the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach. He says, I want you to know that you shall do no servile abadah. There shall be no labor, no working to enhance your flesh, flesh, to bring any provision for your flesh. There shall be none. There shall be no servile labor work therein. He said, but you shall make an offering made by Isha, by fire, unto Yah. We must have the burning fire of the Torah in our bosom. As Yeremiah said, it is like fire, the ash of Yah, all shut up in my inward parts. And we must bring unto Yah the offering that is made by fire. It must be the living fire of the promises of the Torah that well up from the inner parts of Yisrael and that we cry aloud as the shofar makes the alarming sound to awaken us and to warn us. But it must be a specific kind of offering that we must make Yisrael. I am so glad for the provision that Yah has made for us through Yahshua HaMashiach. Because if He had not elected us or been on our side, we would be in one of the most hellish dilemmas that one can even imagine. And so we give Toda unto Him for all that He has done and what He is doing. He gives Moshe in the book of Bimitz, bar numbers, chapter 29, verse 1. Again, he tells him what kind of offering we must bring unto him. And the fire is what accentuates the offering. When we know that there's a living fire of his Torah in us, it brings about the gladness to bring the offering 
unto O Maria. He speaks to Gander in the same breath, by the same ruach. Be made by Numbers 29, verse 1. Again, a reminder. And in the seventh month of the first day of the month, you shall have a chadosh or a chodash zigron, a convocation, a time of gathering in Yerushalayim, a time to bring your offering prepared from your lever unto Omariya. He said, you shall do no kind of work. It shall be a blowing, a tiruach, an alarm sound, a sounding as of a tempest, the blowing of the shofar to you. Again, he tells us, and you shall offer a burnt offering. He tells us that it must be a nechuach, a sweet, a precious, a sweet, a soothing offering of tranquility unto his bosom. It must be a sweet, savoring, or reach. Now the word savior. We should eradicate that out of our vocabulary. It is not a true identity of Yam. It is a form of a pagan god or a god. And I have done the research. And I shall enhance the book, The Demise of the Gods or the Gods of the Torah. And this corrupt spirit to destroy the name of Yam. And how the enemy has infiltrated words in the Torah. We won't get into that tonight, but it is his reach, reach. It is his sweetness, fragrance. Oh, taste the Torah of Yah and see how sweet it is, Yisraya. It is very pleasant to the belly. It is the healing power of Yah. He said it must be a burnt offering. A desire to please Yah must burn from the evil parts. We cannot finagle. There must be a deep devotion, a great sincerity. We cannot be false, Yisraya. He said, I want this offering brought unto me, and the fire of this beauty of your desire to please me, that must be the catalyst. It must be the strength and the fervor of your offering. You will offer it with great zeal and gusto. It will be sincere from the depths of your bosom. He says, I want a sweet, a niku offering to Yah. And he tells us one young bullock, that which is strong, and that is what a young bullock is. It plows in the fields. It has a strength it is beyond human capacity. And the strength of Yah is beyond the capacity of our minds to rationalize it. We can't do that. And so the offering must come by the nurturing of his strength. We know that this offering is nothing that we can muster of our own strength. Because our sweetness has to come from our minds and our hearts being developed by the Torah that we can offer unto him a sweet fragrance of offerings. He says, and one ram, a ram represents one that stands strong and will not and will combat for the territory of Yah. We are set for defense, for the testimony of Yahshua, Hamashiach. That's what we are set for. And that is what the ram does. It defends it defends the harem. It's a strong beast. Your shoe is the ram for Yisraya. He stands in the gate for us. In the place to combat the powers of hell. And he says, I want seven young lambs in the first year. And in this hour that we're in, we're in the year of Yah. That we are being renewed daily. The seven young lambs represent the seven ruachim. And the seven ruachim, the spirits of Yah, it is always a delight. It is a light to us, Yisrael. 
It will always enlighten our, our minds. It will always be a light that shines in the midst of all of this darkness. We must offer a sweet offering unto Almighty Yah. Shaul gives us an understanding in the book of Ephesia, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. He commands us here to walk in Ahava, in the love of Yah, in the Ruach of Yah. He says, and walk in Ahava, love, as Hamashiach also has loved us. And he has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Yah for a sweet smelling reach, a fragrance that flow. We cannot offer unto Yah the sweet smelling or the fragrance of his delight unless the power of the aid, the testimony of Yahshua is real in us. It must be real. It must be of strength and power. And the only way we can operate in that realm is that we must love him. And then when we love him, we bring unto him uh, the express power of his truth in Yeshua because the testimony is real. And the only way, Yisrael, we can offer this sweet fragrance, this reach of an offering unto Yah. We must walk in his hava. His love. We must have a love for Torah, His truth. We must love Yah with all of our love and our lemma, our nefesh, and all of our koach, our strength, our might. We must, because the testimony of your shoe is real, it is the power of our lives. It is the testimony of our tikva, our promises of what we wait upon. And the only way we get off for that, there must be a love for Yah in Yeshua. We don't have that. We cannot bring the sweet smelling, offering the sweet fragrance unto Yah. We'll offer a fragrance that is of stench. And then when we understand the mighty power of Yah in the works of our Hamashiach, then the fire burns down in the midst of us. And the offering is one of great gladness. His offerings are not done away with. He has simply made them known unto us uh, in the simplest of form. By the revelation of Yeshua, Hamashiach, it is vital that we offer unto him. And the only thing that is sweet of the fragrance that he delight in it must be the testimony of your sure. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 15, Shaul says here, For we are to Yah a sweet fragrance. We are Yisrael. As long as we walk in the commands of Yah, no fast to his imats. For we are Yisraya. I don't think we understand the depths of that. That's why we don't know how to offer with a fire the offering unto Yah. He says, for we are a sweet fragrance, Yisraya, a sweet fragrance of Yeshua HaMashiach. In them that are delivered, and even in them that perish, even in the midst of the battle as we stand on the promises of Yah, not all shall die before the coming or, or the last shofar that shall blow. But the sound, even at that, even though that have died, your sure shall get up first. So we are in your sure. We are a sweet fragrance of your sure. So we offer unto Yah the beauty of the fragrance of your sure. Not our stench. I know that we all have a stench, but he wants the fragrance. Because we emit unto him 
during the course of the year to this time as we come near the latter end of Yah's year, he wants the sweetness of the fragrance of Yahshua. And if we offer that unto him, Yisrael, what a great blessing that is. And he shall enrich us greatly. And that is the truth, Yisrael. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We began to develop this mindset by this pattern here in Tehillim Psalms 104, verse 34. Dawi speaks of his meditation, his sikh And this is a form of prayer and talking to you. He says, my sikh my meditation to Yah. What I think about the tub of Yah. And all that he has done for me, uh, my nephesh cries, hallelujah. I tell Taya for delivering me. Uh, this is what the siach is. This is what the meditation. And Dawi says, uh, what I meditate on him. Uh, he says, on him shall be a sweet. It shall be sweet. It shall be a rap. It shall be pleasing to my mind. The Torah, when I meditate upon the Torah. It shall satisfy me. It shall be sweet to my mind. He said, I will be glad in Yah. So this is the time that we meditate on him to offer unto him the sweet offering. We meditate on Yeshua. We see, ah, we see, ah, we allow the word to just form in our mind the image of Yeshua. That we are glad that we know we know him. And that our offering is acceptable unto him. His word must be sweet as Dawi said. Oh yeah, how sweet is thine word in my mouth. And his Torah must be sweet in our mouth. He said it is even sweeter than the dabach or the honey out of the honeycomb. That's why we must meditate. And in that we will offer unto him the great Precious offering. I want to close here in 2 Corinthians. Yeah. And as I began this in 2 Corinthians, here what Shaul says, I simply read one verse. I want to begin here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 through verse 17. Hear this, Yisraya. He says, Shaul says, this is how. And this is what we offer unto you. He says, now we must, we told her, now thanks be or told her to Yah, who always calls us to triumph, to overcome every affliction, even our healing. He says, in Hamashiach, in Yeshua. And makes manifest the fragrance of the sweetness, uh, the re'ach, the smell, the fragrance uh, of his knowledge uh, by us in every place. Uh, regardless of where we go, we, our offering is a fragrance, a pleasure to the nostrils of Yah. And in every place we go, we make known this beautiful fragrance that it sends off the odor from us uh, that it is the fragrance of the sweetness of Yahshua HaMashiach. For we are to Yah a sweet fragrance uh, of HaMashiach. That's what we are. We are the fragrance of Yahshua. The way he smells, uh, that's the way we smell. <clears throat> He said, in them that are your shach or delivered, and even in them that perish. He says to one, we are the fragrance of death to death. To others, the fragrance of life to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the Torah of Yah, we cannot deny the Mo'at of Yah. We cannot say that it has been done away with. We cannot say that it is not pertinent. It is. Every word that he has written is pure. And the only way we can walk in it and oblige him is through the power 
and the revelation of Yeshua. He must be made known in us. And until that power of birth is in us, we will always compromise this Torah according to our natural perception, deduction of what we read. And this is only revealed by the Re'ach HaChodesh. For we are not as many that which corrupt the Torah of Yah, but as of sincerity, but as of Yah in the sight of Yah, speak we in Yahshua. That's the only way we can speak is in Yahshua HaMashiach. We cannot speak any other way. And if we do not walk in the love of Yah, as Mashiach has also loved us, and has given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to Yah for a sweet smelling fragrance. So we must give ourselves unto Yah as an offering. We offer up our love, our mind. We offer all unto him. We offer our hands as we extend them to Hashem. For he made all things. We must offer unto him what is sweet. He wants the sweet fragrance of the offering unto him. And as we mature and grow in the knowledge of Yah, then the fragrance become more pungent, more rich and more alive. You understand? It is almost like a cheap bottle of cologne, a perfume. When you get into the riches of the oils, that may cost two or three hundred dollars an ounce. The fragrance lasts for days. You can't even wash it off. It stays. And you only need a drop on the living portions, the pulse of one's body. So he must be the pulse. He must be the living substance of our bosom. We greet you all, Ogan, that have joined us here in Yerushalayim. As we gather here for this beautiful gathering uh, of uh, Yom Tiruach, the blowing of the shofar. We're going to have our Ach Yosipiyah. He's going to come and sing. And then we're going to greet our Zachin, Yaramiyah, which will guide us in the depths of this truth. He shall instruct us in all that Yah has granted his heart to understand. We will trust Yah. As to what he shall deliver unto us tonight, Yisra'ah. It is vital that we have the ears to hear what the Ruach speaks unto us. Isn't that important? I want to hear what Yah speaks unto me. And so we pray that he grant this simple messenger tonight. Words of wisdom. Words of experience from his love. And when he speaks unto us, it may cause... The power of the testimony of Yahshua to come alive in us. That is so vitally important in this hour, Yisrayam. We are coming to the Akharith, the last day, the times where Yah, if he does not manifest his power among Yisrayam, we will become weary and we all shall turn away from him. And that is the truth. May Yah barak you all. You shall be blessed tonight. Yah barak shalom.
as being the end of all things. But yet, this is a, a joyous time for Yisrael. We should be fired up for Yahweh, having our offerings ready to present unto Yahweh, offering by fire. Don't you understand what Yahweh is doing? And what he shows unto us, Yisrael, his mysteries, hallelujah, that he shall reveal unto the house of Yisrael. Hallelujah. Only to Yisrael should this mystery be revealed, even to the blowing of the shofar. Not just any shofar, not just the first, the second, the third, but the last. Powerful word, last. Last, the last. When you're enjoying a few cookies out of a cookie container, you may eat two or three, but yet there's some still left in the container. But yet when you finish the container, is that the last of the cookies? Well, not really, because you can go right out to the store. That's all right. I just go get some more. But what we are talking about is, is a time and an ending, which, which will be the last. And I mean the last. I want us to understand that. No more. The last. The end. The last. Sure, you may make a sandwich, and it's tough to your palate, but yet when you finish that sandwich, is that the end? No, you might have some more bread. Some more meat in the refrigerator, is that not right? And if you do not, what can you do? Just go to the grocery store. But at this end, there shall be no more. Just as the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach, shall he face that shame again? Shall his blood be shed a second time? No. Only once for Adam, for man. So even in that example of Yahshua, even that, as I shall get into this message, being the last so far that was sound. Hallelujah. Do we understand that the veil was ripped from the, the um, Kodesh place? That was also a type of the last. His offering. There's no more need of the bullock or the goats or the sheep. Why? Because his offering. The offering of Yahshua HaMashiach, his dawn, hallelujah, is the last that, shall, that has been given unto Yisrael. Why? That we can come before the Abba boldly. No longer being afraid, but we can come boldly before the throne of Yahshua HaMashiach. So I want to get into this message, Yisrael, concerning the last shofar, the sounding and the events. Conditions of Yahweh. Are we ready? Yes, Hallelujah. Ready. Don't you know there's a last show far for each of us to sound? Hallelujah. Just as the stake of Yahshua HaMashiach, there's a stake for every one of us, a trial, a situation to overcome, the triangle of our imunah that it may come forth as pure gold, as tried by fire. We all shall come to that end or that last day, shall we not? Yes. But it's a time for us to look forward to. Yes. Sure the end of suffering, yes. the end of tears, on, of pain. Yes. Isn't that something for us to look forward to, Yisrael? Yes. The ending of all things, the last, the very last sure so far. Even the times that it takes for us to get up to that last time. I've been married, Yisrael, going on about 12 years, a short time. Yes, yes but even in the engagement with my Isha, yes, yes. one thing that we have learned, that we learned together, and those of you that had the same experience, that the intimacy, the caressing of that nature is for it to in at a climatic event. Certainly you look for the touch. Do you not? Don't we look for the touch of Yahshua HaMashiach? Come on, Yisrael. It's in taboo unto us. You know what I'm talking about. 
I look forward to that time when, every, when everything's right, everything's laid out, everything goes according to procedure. Don't you know everything is going according to the procedure of Almighty Yahweh? He's not missing any more. Yahshua have not skipped any account. He done all that Yahweh commanded him to do. Why? What for? To bring us to the end. The last. The climatic event. Don't you know, don't you look for the end of that climatic event? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Hallelujah. Don't you know that the seven day period, even in the seven months of Abba Yahweh, but the seven weeks, six days shall we labor? Man has labored, have we not? Have we not labored, Israel? Yes, yes. And then on the seventh day, yes, he commands us to what? Rest. Rest in him and the comfort of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Yes. Do we not labor seven, six days, Israel? But yet on the Shabbat, what is that the seventh day? Yes, yes. The number seven. If you recall, recollect when I was teaching concerning um, being born of Yah, the seventh. It's a time or a circulation of completeness in Yahweh. He could have picked any number. Why seven? Because it's a time of completion. So all that we have experienced, Yisrael, through our forefathers, if I may use that term, even up to this present time, we are seeing the last days. The labor is to prepare us for what? The sounding of this last time. The seventh day, the seventh yeah. shofar. So let me get into this message, Israel. Right. This time for us to be exceedingly joyful. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Knowing that the end is at hand. Yes. And we shall see Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. And we shall pass from these mortal bodies of flesh, hallelujah, yes. to a body that is eternal, everlasting. Hallelujah. Wait, so let, let me get into this. Hallelujah. If you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, I want to begin reading. Behold, I show you a mystery. He says, I show you. He didn't say, I show everyone. So it hasn't been talking to a specific person or people. Behold, I show you. A mystery. What is a mystery? It takes someone of a certain mind and experience to understand a mystery. It has to be revealed unto him. Even there are those that have studied cases, documents for years, and still have not come to the conclusion. Hallelujah. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or pass from this life or seeks to exist, or to die. Right. But we shall all be changed. Right. I'm looking forward to that change, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. We shall all be changed. Yes. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Right. Yeah. To be honest with you, Israel, I'm, I've seen eye twitches, but a twinkling, yeah. how fast is that? Can that be measured? Uh, Very quickly. Before you are able to comprehend it, it has already happened. And it's happened again and again. But in a twinkling of an eye, at the, what does it say? Last. So far. Not the first, not the second. But the last. So far. For the shofar shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Don't you want the life of Yahshua to rise in our bosom, Israel, Yah, incorruptible? And we shall be changed. So there's a change. There's a transformation. Not a calling up. Not this damnable theory of the rapture. No. No, it's a change. There's a change coming, Israel, Yah. As the old condition would say, there's a change coming. I'm waiting for my change. For this corruptible, are we not yet corruptible? Don't you, as you look at this flesh, you have to always clean it. You have to wash it. Because why? It's corruptible. It gets nasty. It stinks. So this corruptible 
must, must put on in corruption. I mean, you can look at this stuff and just see why it cannot stand before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. So there must be a change, Israel. When shall this change take place? I will get into that. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. For this corruptor must put on incorruption, and this mortal must, must yes. put on immortality. Sure. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, right. then shall be brought to pass the Dabar, the Torah, the word, the prophecy of Almighty Yahweh, yeah. that is written. That is, written. is it written? Sure it is. Is everything once it is written, shall it not come to pass? Sure once Yahweh speak it, yeah. doesn't it not happen? Sure yeah. Even when it was prophesied of old. Sure. Each prophecy, each testimony, yeah. in its time, yeah. has always come to fluoration, come to maturity. Death is swallowed up in Teshua in victory. Was not death swallowed up when Yahshua HaMashiach, when he died and he rose again? Did he not take the keys of death? Hallelujah. The enemy that we all shall face, we should not face it in fear. But in Teshua, why? Because it has been swallowed up in victory. Yeah. How do we get that victory? Where did it come from? It come from Yahshua HaMashiach. The offering given from Almighty, Almighty Yahweh. Verse 55. O oh death, where is your sting? Where is the power of death? O oh grave, where is your victory? You don't have it anymore. It has been given unto Yisrael. Unto Yah's elect to overcome through the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach. The sting of death is, is sin. What is sin? What is sin? How do we come into the knowledge of sin? By the Torah. So what is sin? Is the transgression of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? That's what it is. And the strength of sin is the Torah. See, that could be for our enlightenment, sure. or it could be for our condemnation. Sure. For the Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach, was it not the Torah made flesh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Did it not come into the world? Yeah. But what happened? Men, they wanted to be in darkness. Sure. They didn't want the Torah to reveal their sins. True, so in that condemnation, which they was condemned already, there's no salvation. Except through Yahshua, Hamashiach, the Torah. Verse 57, but thanks be to Yahweh, who gives us victory, Teshua, and our master, Yahshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. We have the victory, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Therefore, my beloved, Yisraelite, Kedusha, be you steadfast. Let us stand in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Let us not deny the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach that has cleansed us from all of our sins. Let us not give up the hope, Yisrael. We cannot give up the hope. Hallelujah. Stand steadfast, unmovable. Was Yahshua moved? Did he break? He stood. He stood steadfast, unmovable, always abiding or abounding. In the work of Almighty Yahweh. Yes, For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, Yisrael, yes, as long as it is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, so even our labor, yes. even all that you have experienced, yes. all that you have gone through, it was for our growing, Yisrael. Yes. It was for us to be strong, yes. that we can stand steadfast and immovable before the world. Before each trial, before each situation. Our labor not in vain. Six days of labor? Yes, that's beautiful. Not in vain? Why? Because on the seventh day of completion, yes, of rest, where there's no more worries, hallelujah, we shall receive our reward. What is that reward? What does Yahweh have for us, Yisrael? 
It's something so beautiful we can't even comprehend it. It is a mystery. It's not given to every man to understand this. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us move right along, Israel, to Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. We're talking about the end, the last shofar being sound. Are we ready, Israel? Have we presented our offering before Almighty Yahweh? Have we labored, truly labored? This period of six days as laboring unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. First Thessalonica, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Yisrael, Yisraelite brothers. Ak, a hope, Yisrael. Concerning them which are dead. That has passed from this mortal life. We have those that have stood the test of time, proven their amuna. We rarely sadly think about those, do we? We've, we have forgotten them. The dead. Hallelujah. Concerning them which are dead, that you sorrow not. My mind goes back, and I have to, if I may say, testify of this. Even our ark, Fred, as we recall him. Hallelujah. Even in his last days, I remember he asked a question. He said, son, he said, he said, am I going to die? We was there trying to comfort him, massaging his feet. He asked me the question. A young man, how would I answer this, this arcane, this elder? He said, am I going to die? What was I to tell him? Sure. But the rock of Yahweh came alive in me, and I said to him, yes, you're going to pass, Ark Fred. Yes. But in this life, yes. you should pass for this life, but the life that is awaiting you, yes. Yes. hallelujah, yes. That's all right. whereby all this trouble and these pains, you're not going to feel them anymore. It's going to all be over. Hallelujah. And I remember that big man, he started to, to weep. And he said, told her, he thanked me. Just for that extra strength. Don't you know that's what we need, Israel? Yeah? Don't you know Yahshua has given us that extra push, the extra strength that we need to face the last so far, our last day? Don't you know there's a last so far that the Melach shall sound? Hallelujah. And it shall be no more after that time. Are you ready, Israel? Let us be ready. Hallelujah. Concerning the dead that you sorrow not, even as others which have no tigva, they have no hope. There are those that don't have any hope in this age. The monies have failed them. The homes are taken away from them. They have no confidence anymore in the market. Do we not see it going up and down? Every time it goes up, it goes down even farther. It's going to continue to go down. Why? Because men have their hopes and things that are not everlasting, that fade. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Verse 14, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, do we believe that? Even so them also which sleep. And Messiah Yahshua, right. will Yahshua bring with him? Hallelujah. For this we say to you by the Torah, that are by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive. So we shall not all die or pass from this physical man at this time. But there should be a remnant of us that shall still yet be alive. Alive and remain to what? The coming. Don't you await the coming? Yes, yes. The coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. The coming of Yahshua HaMashiach yes. shall not prevent them yes. which are already dead in the Amuna, mm -hmm. in the faith, in this assurance of Yahshua and the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, which has the power to raise us up 
or raise them which are dead up again in the last days. Hallelujah. If the same Ruach that raised Yahshua HaMashiach from the grave, from the dead, dwells in you, it shall also quicken, hallelujah, that which Yahweh has put in Yisrael. Verse 16, as we continue. For Yahshua HaMashiach himself shall descend the last from the Shemayim with a shout. Don't you see Yahshua HaMashiach, this, this Torah, this trumpet, the last, he says, shout with the voice of the chief, Malak, of the Shemayims, and with the shofar, the last shofar of Almighty Yahweh, the last, the last, there shall be no more Yisrael, the last, don't we understand it's the last? The last. Hallelujah. And with the chief Malak, and with the shofar of Almighty Yahweh, and the dead, those that had passed from this life, and Messiah Yahshua, they shall arise first. We're going to see this, Yisrael? We're going to see them which lay rest in the grave in the tomb, they're going to rise up yes. at the shout, this shout so powerful, this voice, this so far, that even the dead shall hear it. Yes, they shall. And it shall bring forth that life. What is that life? It is the Ruach of Yahweh. Yes. Even though they may have passed from this life, yet the Ruach still stays there and rests, yes. waiting, waiting patiently. For this revelation, the revealing of Yahshua HaMashiach. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together. Together. Have we not gathered here at this time? Together, Yisrael. Those of you that may be listening by via of live stream. We have all gathered together. For this Migrah. This gathering, this ingathering, why? Yes. That we may be reminded, Yisrael, sure. of the last so far. Yes. For the last so far shall sound, and it is coming, and it's not far away, Yisrael. Oh, right. So what should we do as a people, as a nation, prepare? Yes. Let us labor, Yisrael, yes. for it shall not be in vain yes. when that last so far sound. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahshua HaMashiach in the Shemayims in the air. And so shall we be with Yahshua HaMashiach. Wherefore, Yisrael, comfort one another. Do we comfort one another? Do we seek to comfort one another, Yisrael? Or do we seek to, to cut each other down? We should comfort one another. Why? In this knowledge. That even though it seen, or that it is the last, yet it is a new beginning, Israel. Yes. Sure, the last shall fall, but yet it is the beginning of, if I may say, another age or another Eternal chapter, age. hallelujah, for Israel. Yes. 18. Wherefore, come for one another with these words. What are the words, Israel? What should we comfort one another with? It should not be with lies. It should not be with contentment amongst one, one another. But that I hope and that we steadfast stand on the dom and the promises of Almighty Yahweh in the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Turn with me to Gilyana, Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. I want to begin reading concerning the last, the last so far. As Yahshua HaMashiach come with the great shout of the, the Malach, the Ark Malach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have that shout, Yisrael? Yes, Hallelujah. Let me hear it, the shout. Hallelujah. Yes. The shout of Teshua. 
Blow the show for you, Israel. Hallelujah. Sound it upon the mountain of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Don't you know when you shout unto Almighty Yahweh that even those things that rest in us that are dead, that we have buried, it should come to life? Israel, y'all. So let us shout unto Yahweh. Hallelujah. As even now as he's working his perfect work and his will is even being done even now. Hallelujah. Blow the shofar, Yisrael. Hallelujah. 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 So let our minds and let our lives rest at ease in full assurance and confidence. Hallelujah. That everything is going to be all right. Even though the storms may rage outside the tabernacle and we see the lightnings tonight. Those of you listening, we're having a storm here. Yet, even though there's a little fear there, yet we know that it's from Abba Yahweh. And he is in control of all things. Hallelujah. So what should we do? Reverence him? Yes, reverence Yah. Hallelujah. For his great power and his mighty acts. Gileana, Revelation, chapter 8, verse 1. And, we, and when he had opened the seventh seal, even the last seal is the seventh. The seventh seal. There was a silence in Hashemayim about the space of half an hour. I don't believe that time frame is what we consider half an hour, Yisrael. Half an hour. The Shemayims. Quiet. Still. Even if the Melikim, if they had a muscle, which I know they don't, they did not budge. They did not move. There was, there was a very serious time that everyone, every ruah, even gave thought to it. At the space in half an hour. And I saw the seventh malak which stood before Almighty Yahweh. Can't you imagine that, Israel? Yah? Isn't that something how we use our imagination and our thoughts? In the most devious ways. Let us imagine this. Let us not comprehend, but just imagine this. I saw the seventh Malak which stood before Yahweh, and to them were given the seventh shofar. But in the days of the voice of the seventh Malak, when he shall begin, to sound, it says, when he shall begin to sound, that the mystery, what is this mystery? What is this thing that man, even in his so-called knowledge, try to understand this mystery, and yet they do not understand it? Even those that speak on it, as if they have a great knowledge, yet they do not understand it. We're not going to understand this, Yisrael, except the knowledge been be given from Almighty Yahweh concerning yeah, this mystery. Yeah. What, is this, what is this mystery, Yisrael? Even us being gathered here today is a mystery. That we're all here with lightness of mind, aren't we? Lightness of ruah, singleness of eye, with one purpose. What is that purpose? To please Almighty Yahweh. Those of you that are scattered throughout the OLM, our one purpose should be yes. to please Almighty Yahweh. And yet we are all gathered together in one mind, in one place. We might not be with each other physically, yet yes. in the Ruach we are all in one place. Isn't that not a mysterious thing that we want to cause us to wonder, cause us to think and want to meditate on that, Yisrael, yeah. The mystery, this mystery, what is this mystery? The kingdom, the milk of Yahweh yes. being implemented, installed put together at the blowing of this seventh, this time of completion, this number of completion, after all the labor, Israel, the mystery of Yahweh should be, what does it say? Gayana 10 and 7? Should be what? Finished. Done. Complete. 
Seven. Complete. It's finished. It is done. He has declared it to his servants. The Nevian. His messengers. To proclaim this Israel. And the voice which I heard from the Shemayim spoke to me again and said, Go and take the little book. What is that little book? Yes, come on. I believe that little book was the Torah sure of yes. Yahweh. No doubt. Of judgment. Does not the Torah judge us? Sure does. Doesn't it not convict us of sin, of iniquity? That's all right. Isn't that what the Torah is for, Israel? Right, yes. No doubt about it. Which is open in the hand of the Malak, which stands upon the ah. sea. Upon this, this vast place, Israel, the sea. When you look upon the sea as we have taken our trips or our journeys to the coast, doesn't it seem like it has no end? The waves, the disruption of the water in itself is just beautiful. If you have a chance to see it when the sun is just rising and the reflection of it upon the water. Can't you imagine this Malak standing upon the water yeah. with this, this bright light, Israel, y'all holding this book? That's all right, man. Which stands upon the sea, upon the Shemayim, the Oleh. And I went to the Malak and said to him, give me the little book. Yes, sir. And he said to me, take it. Can you imagine taking that? Don't you know that Yahweh, even now, Yisrael, has allowed us to take this little book of the Torah? Come on, Yisrael. Yeah. Has he not written his Torah in our left? Even the stone, the tablets, were broken. But yet Yahweh said, that's all right, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to write this upon this little table, yeah. this little book, this little chapter in our Levim, Yisrael, yeah, right. that we could take hold of it. Yeah. But he said to the Malak, the Malak said, take it and eat it up. Should we not eat this, Yisrael? Sure and it shall make your belly bitter. Sure. I've experienced that as we take upon the Torah this body of Yahshua HaMashiach, it seems it's bitter as it go in, as it cleans. You know, when you take a, a cleansing herb to purge your system, it's bitter. Yeah. It's bitter, Yisrael. But yet, when it goes down, it pulls out the impurities, those things that set upon the walls of our digestive tract. Everything that is not, that, that should not be there, it's going to draw it out. A good laxative does that. But it shall make your belly bitter, but it shall be in your mouth sweet as honey. It's not Yahshua sweet. Have we not sung this, sung this song? He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Yes, Yahweh, Yahshua sweet, I know. The Dhamma Yahshua, the Torah of Yahshua, sweet, I know. But in your mouth, Sweet as honey. And it says here in chapter 10, verse 10. I took the little book out of the Malak's hand yeah. and I ate it up. Sure. He didn't just eat it, but he ate it up. Eat it up. Eat it up. We should eat it up, Yisrael. Yeah. The Torah of Amma Yahweh, Yahshua. We should eat it all. It should not resist any of it. Has he not laid out a, a beautiful table for us tonight, Yisrael? Yeah. With the word laid out in order. When you come to a magnificent table of fine dining, yes. everything's laid out in order. It's beautiful. Yes. It's pleasant to the eye. You almost don't want to disrupt anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. The Torah of Yah, sweet as honey. This judgment. But as soon as I had eaten it, 
my belly was bitter. And he said to me, you must proclaim, you must prophesy, you must cry aloud. Yes, yes. Again, before many people and nations and tongue and Melahim. Yes. Let you know that even in the last days, Israel, that the Torah of Yahweh, his judgment, the exhortation, of it, Israel, it shall all fall upon Adam, upon man. Sure in the last day, the judgment of Yahweh. It's there in the Torah, yeah. the judgment of Yahweh. But even in judgment, we find restoration. Sure we do. Even in judgment, we have reassurance. Sure. Why? Not because of our own works, mm -hmm. not because of the lambs that we have, yeah. if I may use this term and I will use it, sacrifice. Yeah. We think we've given something up. That's all right. We haven't given anything up unto Yah. But it's because Yahweh has sent the offering, Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, right. And the dom of the precious lamb. Hallelujah. That we are able, Yisrael, Yah, to press forward and to press on. And even to face the end time with boldness and with reassurance that Yahweh will bring us through. And he said to me, you must prophesy again before many people and nation, and tongue, and Melachim. Mm -hmm. Let's move on, Yisrael, to Yoel. Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 1, concerning the blowing of the shofar to Zion. Yeah. Blow the shofar in Zion. Shout it, let it shout, let it sound upon the most high, yeah. the highest mountain. Yeah. Who is the highest mountain? Yeah. Hallelujah. There should be a high place for the Torah of Yahweh and Elohim, yeah, Yisrael. Yeah. We want to put it on the back burner or put it on a shelf mm -hmm. and it collect dust. Mm -hmm. That we even forget the Torah of Yahweh, the Mishra of Yah. No, it should be placed upon the pinnacle, the high place of our mind. Yeah. That there shouldn't be a second of thought, Yisrael, yeah, of minute or day, that the Torah of Yahweh should not cross our mind. This is our life, Yisrael, yeah, the Torah. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. He says, blow you the shofar. Where's the shofar? Yes, yes. Who's got, where's that shofar? At? Somebody blow a shofar for me. Hallelujah. That's all right. Hallelujah. Blow the shofar. Zion. Blow the shofar. It's Zion. And sound the alarm. Sound the alarm, Israel. Hallelujah. Don't you know that it's only Israel that is going to hear the shofar? Our ears are going to be tuned perfectly to that sound. Now the wicked aren't going to hear it. Those that do not have the Torah of Yah and the Lord, they're not going to hear it. Blow the shofar in Zion and sound an alarm in my most Kodesh mountain. Let all the inhabitation of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh. Come, it's the last day of Yahweh comes. For it is near at hand. What is this day? What is this time? A day of darkness and of gloominess. Did not Yahshua, when he died on the stake, was it not, did not the clouds become darkened? Was it not gloominess, Yisrael Yah? A day of clouds and of thick darkness. Did it not get dark? As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong people. There has not been ever the like. Neither shall any more be after it. Even to the years of many, many generations. Who is going to be like Israel? Mm -hmm. Who is going to be like the people or the children of Almighty Yahweh? None. none. There's none like the nation of Israel. Yes. For we have the power of Yahweh dwelling even mm -hmm. in our bosom, Israel. Sure. His Torah is even nigh unto us, even in your mouth. Sure Verse 3. 
A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, before this mighty people. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes. Should not this desolate wilderness be behind us, Israel? Yes, should. should we not put off this old man? Yeah, that's like that. The lust, yeah. this life. It should be a desolate wilderness. We should put it behind us, Yisrael, as being a great nation before Almighty Yahweh. Yes, and nothing shall escape them. Yes. Nothing. Nothing should get away, Yisrael. Nothing should get away from the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Nothing should get... We, we let a lot get by, don't we? Yes. Let's be honest. Yes. yes, we do. Nothing should get by, Yisrael. Yes, Jeremiah, chapter 4. Verse 19 through verse 22, as I bring the simplicity of this message to a close, Yisrael. Let us not so easily forget the Torah of Yah as it's been spoken to us. It's for our learning, it's for our exhortation, even the rebuke and the reproof is for us, and just to reassure us, Yisrael, to stand strong. Let us be unmovable. Always abiding, abounding in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Before there is a time that is coming soon, that all things, all that we are reading, Yisrael, in the Torah shall be fulfilled. When? When's our king, Yeramiah? At the last shofar. I'm looking forward to it, Yisrael. Zakin Yeramiah, you're talking foolishly. Yes, I am. You don't know what you're saying. By Imunah, yes, I do. Because I believe what the Torah says. We shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last shofar. When Yahweh should make an end of this chapter, if I may use that, and usher us into the beginning of a new thing. And this mystery is only for the house of Yisrael. We shall all be together in one place, Yisrael. Even as we look to our forefathers, our grandparents, our parents, they always talk about the Shemayim. They talk about how are you going to see your mother there and your kinsmen there. We're not going to know each other as we see each other now. We're not even going to have the same name. It's going to be written in the white stone. The only one that's going to know that name is you. It's going to be given to each and one of us, each and every one of us, Yisrael. And we shall all be gathered in one place in the Melkut of Almighty Yahweh. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So let us count this migra, this gathering together, Yisrael, as a beautiful thing. As we await and as we remember, that's what this is for. That we remember what Yahweh has in store. Yeah. And that we enjoy the camaraderie and the fellowship of one another. Hallelujah, Yisrael. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 19. He says, my inward parts, my inward parts... I am pained at my very love, at my heart. My love makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my silence. Because you have heard, O oh my nephesh, the sound of the shofar, the alarm of war. Don't you sense the racing of your love even now, Yisrael? Don't you hear the sounding of the shofar of Almighty Yah? The warning to prepare for this battle, for this time of end. Do we have our loins girdled with the instruments of warfare, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? That we prepare our minds for this last time, Yisrael? Verse 20. Destruction upon destruction is being cried. For the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents Poor, my place of refuge, yeah. the place where I believe that I can abide in or I can hide from this, it is spoiled. My curtains in a moment has all been spoiled, Israel. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the shofar? Yes, yes, yes. A sound to prepare for battle, yes, to prepare for the last time, sure to prepare for the coming of Yahshua yes, sure HaMashiach. Yes. 
It says in verse 22 of Jeremiah, my last verse here, Yisrael, he says, for my people is foolish. We are foolish. We have done foolish things. We have thought foolish things. They have not known me. We have not known you, Almighty Yahweh. If it was not for the veil, Yahshua, Hamashiach, his offering upon the stake as he was beaten. Don't you know he is our veil, Yisrael? He is where we enter into him that we may be presented unto Almighty Yahweh. He says, they have not known me. They are sottish children. Isn't that not, not true? Isn't that not, not true, Yisrael? Even if you look, when you look at children, even compared to your life, children, they're, they're sottish. They're sottish by nature. Foolishness. That's why we should not spare the rod. That's why Yahweh does not spare the rod, Yisrael. And he drives that spirit of foolishness from us, far from us. And they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do right, we have no knowledge. And we do not have no knowledge, Yisrael. Say the Torah of Yahshua HaMashiach. The Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. If it wasn't for that, Yisrael, there would be no way that we could be presented as a sweet-smelling Savior, as we heard, or to the throne of Almighty Yahweh. He desires that of us tonight, Yisrael, yes. a sweet-smelling Savior, yes. an offering by fire. And that fire heating up this oil that is within us, this frankincense of the mercy, Yisrael, unto Almighty Yahweh. We must hear the sound of the shofar. What if we miss it? We won't miss it. We will all be ready. Hallelujah. At the last shofar. Hallelujah. Y'all will barak you all, Yisrael. May the shalom of Yahweh rest upon your lips tonight. And just remember, don't forget, Yisrael, that all things as we know it shall come. It's going to come to an end. It's at its end. But... Let us await the promise of the last shofar. Hallelujah. At this time, I do turn this over to Raya Dawi, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, you all. Hallelujah. Again, we greet you all that have joined us for the live broadcast. Let us not forget our Ach Lester. There in Chicago, precious Ach, friend of the works of Yah here, you that are listening tonight have joined us. He has been a consistent strength of help to the labor here and his offerings have been very generous continuously and let us remember him in prayer we're trusting Yah we know that he is our healer he is Yah Rafa the healer of Yisrael and unless he heals us we cannot be healed I'm not going to add anything and to what our precious Achin Yaramiha Yisraya has spoken unto us tonight, I simply say to us, let us allow that to saturate our bosom, our minds, and let it be a rich resource of fragrance that cause our sleep to be sweet and we to find rest. Yoshua Hamashiach, for I look for the Melchut, the kingdom of Yah. And we will know that when his kingdom is come, we will operate in the power of Almighty Yah. He is trying to build his kingdom in us, but as Zakain closed the message, he tells us what we are, and that's our nature. And that does not allow any of us any escape. Yah identified his people and we are his people we may think highly of ourselves we are an unlearned people because we are not willing to learn the eyes to see what we cannot see the ears are uh, 
to understand, but yet we don't understand Israel. Yeah. So it is vital unto us as he reminded us. Yeah. Are, this was a profound message tonight. We can't deny that. It was full of the rich substance of Torah, the body of Yeshua. You can eat all that and add fatness to your skeleton, your bones. And this is what we need, Israel, as we await the time of we rejoice here in a few days on the 8th for the atonement of Yeshua HaMashiach, the price that has been paid. Let us be reminded of this, that his Mu'adim are vital because these are his feast days. And the world has twisted us to make us think that they're not important, but yet Christmas and the, and the whore days of the world, our parents went out of their way, didn't they? Even the world recognized them. The world is silent on those days. Yet yeah, when it comes to Yahweh, don't consider. But these are the feast days of Yah. This is what he has set aside. Because he wants to sit down with us. He wants to fellowship with us. We keep our anniversaries, our children's birthdays. We know every birthday. And yet yeah, when it comes to he says, just let me sit down with you. Sit in my house and... Let me feed you a little today. And I rejoice in that, Yisrael. I rejoice in that. I want to be one of those that are alive when Yeshua comes. When the last trump, the Shufa, the Acharith, or the last one, no other one, he brought that. I'm not going to add anything to that. May the riches of Yah rest upon you. All you that have joined us, we greet you. And the blessed name of assurance, that is the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. For he is the Yashach of Yisraya, the Redeemer, the one that has purchased us from death, destruction, and hell. So we entreat the Mishpatim, the judgment of Almighty Yah, because in that we know that he makes himself known unto us by judging us. Isn't that a blessed assurance? Yeah. To know that he makes himself known by his judgments. That's vital to us, Yisrael. Again, we say to you all, Yabrak, Arach, Lester, we stand in proxy as the old ones would say, with you, our friend. For we need you. I need you, my friend. I mean that. Hallelujah. He promised me he's going to call me more frequent now. And I know he will. I had an act to call me today. He said, Reak, I know I'd never call. But I'm going to call. I had one act to say to me, Reak, I know I should call you more and call in, but I don't. But pray that Yah gives me strength. It's just something that I don't do. And I don't know how to do it. There are a lot of things. We don't know how to do it once we began the process. My friend here, when things get dull, he will call me and say, go on, Reach, and preach what Yah commands. We need that. We need that strength of encouragement and motivation. I was reading today as I close, this man, he was talking about the excellency of his ability to master the things in his life that he is renowned in his profession like no other man. It has made him quite wealthy. It has given him a stealth uh, presentation when he comes in the midst of people. They marvel at him. And he said that he had a man to train him. And he said this, quote, the man he will never compliment me on what I thought was excellent. He said a lot of people can't handle that. But because of his ability to see what I could not see, then I have excelled to the pinnacle of my passion. Like no other man, and I am recognized in the world... Like none other because I reign supreme 
And it took the critiquing to refine him. And so Yah is correcting his house, Yisrael, by his judgment. Correct me, Yah, in thy judgment, and not in thine anger, unless you bring me to nothing. So we rejoice in his judgment. Yabarat, let us stand to our feet as we turn toward Yerushalayim. The city of Araba, as as long as we are under this yoke of Shabba, this Shabi, we are bound. We will turn to the city where his name is and offer Arabala. We greet you, Almighty Yan, your sure's name for this blessed day. We sure that you have granted unto us. Strengthen us, Arach Lester. Touch him mightily in your sure's name. And cause the power of the testimony, your sure's healing power, to rise in his bosom in a mighty way. We ask in your mighty name. We pray for all those that have joined us, our friends and our enemies. We pray for our Ima Oprah there in the Maryland area. You strengthen her and all of your people. We ask you to watch over our precious Achin Shimri and his Isha as they travel the roads tonight home and our Achot Bloods and our Achot Jennifer and her family. We ask it in Yahshua's name. Give us comfort and strength and rest as we shall gather with one another to fellowship on tomorrow. As the old ones would say, if it's your will, you have it's your pleasure. Grant that unto Yisrael. We ask all of these simple blessings and desires in the most precious name of Yoshua HaMashiach. We barak you and with our voices, we cry hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah,